ready for us to talk <coughs> a load of Sorry. bullshit. It's <laughs> <laughs> tons of bullshit we're going to talk tonight, mate. Lots of bullshit. <sighs> Try me. Good evening, ladies and gents, and welcome back to the Football Booth Podcast, episode six. I'm Fennan. Join alongside me, a jolly good old mayhem with me. How are you this evening, my good man? Well, I'm a bit fatigued from real life stuff. Um, very, very giddy. Um, football stuff, and all. a little bit apprehensive because Celtic are in Europe tonight, and it's always. Um, it's always entertaining, but you know that's that's what we're about an hour away from. For all, indeed, yeah, yeah. Recording on a Wednesday, a little bit different. Champions League night, of course. Um, I'll be sitting back and watching it. You'll be sitting back and watching it. Someone else would be sitting back and watching it. Michael Beal, because he ain't got no job. <laughs> Michael Beal out the door. Ten months he lasted at Rangers. Off the back of a 3-1 defeat to Aberdeen and leaves them not second in the Cinch Premiership, but third place. Three defeats already for Rangers this season. I know. I imagine St Mirren, things you'd love to see. Um, for the first time, the first um, Saturday, it was the first time I fancied them to drop points. Um, talking about that lot on this, but with what happened in our game and the would have been you know going through you know govern and they were prepared to to go down to to ibrox the fact that they would have all been in the bars and in the and going going absolutely tonto at the fact that mother world equalized in the 90 yeah, Aberdeen was becoming a huge game now. You know, not only was it Rangers Aberdeen, which is a big game anyway, but potentially close the gap. And then obviously, what happens happens. We'll get into it a little bit more. And I just felt that if that was on the other, I thought we, were, you know, we were going into a game now to close. We, we then had to win to stay the same amount of points behind. You could just feel that it would have been a atmosphere. I felt if Aberdeen could score first, they'd be in, in a really really good. Um, I backed him. I had a wee treble gan. I made it a quadruple. Backed Aberdeen at seven to one. Um, Stevenage let me down at home to Oxford. So fuck you, Stevenage. Mm. Um, I put my money where my mouth is. Backed him all the way. Um, and that was the, the you know the straw broke the camel's back. Um, early rumours the the beer is blowing up that apparently Frank Lamp they're in discussion. Yeah, Frank Lamp yeah, Hod. yep. Um, <laughs> play because he's done fantastic jobs at you know clubs with such small budgets like Chelsea and compared to what he would have to work with at uh, you know that mob so good luck to him <laughs> in his negotiations fair play to him um, but honestly thought that they wouldn't slam the door shut on him as quickly due to the fact that Okay, they're seven points behind, but they've backed him in the summer, right? And no way that you know any Rangers fans can't say that heavily Michael backed in the summer. Back. Yeah. Spent forty million for a team that had to go through qualifiers um, and didn't do qualifiers um, and fell into the Europa League. Um, he was back money to spend. He's thrown money around like a child. Going into their first fucking Smith toy store, just I'll have that, I'll have that, I'll have that. and then gets home and realizes actually what he's brought is a crock of shite. <laughs> and you know, he's in well, he was in big trouble. Subsequently, that was enough. But the guy, the guy just talked out of his ass. Like, Lord, did this be in the brains, you know, Steve and Gerard stopping the 10 and, and all this carry on and. He just he just hit like all those sh- slogans that they love about brand brogues and standards and all this crap. Brand brogues. But ultimately, he won one derby, and that was when he was wrapped up. 
Lost yep. every other meaningful game. Was yet another anger to see Celtic lift the treble under his under his watch, and it's come up massively short. Um, obviously, like the reasons that I thought they were they're through in the cup, they've got a chance there. Obviously, you've got a result against Real Betis. Um, but ultimately, the the league is looking bleak from, and we've only just gone into October, so um, that's them done. Pulled the plug, sacked before Christmas, and um, yeah, we move on. But I'm I'm all for it. Well, it's we we shit. even we even said like last season, like prior to the to the last W you had with Rangers, that it felt like if Michael Beal couldn't at least get one over Celtic that he was going to, always going to be on borrowed time but the fact is like you said that he, he was heavily backed in the summer and they still have European football at a good level in the Europa League but it just feels like in the league at the moment he hasn't he hasn't lived up to it the the signing the names he's brought in haven't lived up to it let's be honest mate you you're talking I was I was out last night to watch the United game. Hope we talk about that as well. <laughs> Top panel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, fucking great viewing. Um, but you know, you're talking about a club that you know within within the UK, you know, Celtic and Rangers, you know, are within that top five of the biggest clubs within the UK. You know, you could argue, you know. Well, I don't think there's not much dispute in the fact that Liverpool and United are probably the two biggest clubs in England. Maybe you could slot Arsenal in there, but Celtic and Rangers are definitely in that top five mix. Yeah. So, taking on that stature of football club and looking at its recent history, they have the same amount of trophies as St Johnston across the last 10 years. Just shows what a failing football t- what a failing side it is. I may even be doing St. Johnson a disservice there. St. Johnson may have three um to to Rangers as two because St. Johnson obviously famously done the the double um when Rangers won the league. So um won the, the league up in the FA Cup. So St. Johnson across that ten year period may even have three. So they may even have less than St. Johnson, who knows? But that's the kind of fucking realms they're in Celtic in that time of taken yeah. twenty six. This this these are the levels that that, you, that are comparable, you know. It's a huge football club that has, you know, for, forgive the pun, but we, you couldn't even say it's been resurrected from the dead, and it, it's still half buried. <laughs> like fucking two trophies, man, in ten years. <laughs> like fucking bringing up the likes of Joey Barton and, and all these carry on fucking pish football players right Todd Campbell falls into that bracket as well that like these boys that are not going to get you and I think okay look the boy can dazzle against fucking Partick Thistle in the cup and that but he's a fairy again he's only played well once in a derby that was one that meant fuck all in the recent one where we went there with half a team he was getting fucking pushed off the ball here there and everywhere and um home with him for a tackle he half artistly tried to pull out and, and he injured himself so funny um and this is the level that they bring in like and I'm, I'm not saying that all of their signings have been terrible i'm just saying 99 percent of them are like and then anyone even that they sign with a bit of prospect and you think all right that's, that's not a terrible signing they find a way to make them terrible it feels like, that... like they just invested in I think they invested in about three or four strikers, though. And what they sold was better, right? They got rid of... Obviously, Morelos had to go. There was a load of shit with him. But that Kolak, they let go, or whatever his name was. Yeah. Right? And the boys that they've brung in, there's no way they're better than Dessas or Danilo or, you know, insert whatever player you want the place up top. None of them are better than that guy. So the recruitment's been utterly horrid. Um, from their aspect, from from my aspect, I think they've done a fantastic job, and I am very sad to see Michael Bill leave. I will miss, <laughs> I will miss, you know, his mole on sports scene on a weekend. R.I.P. Um, <laughs> R.I.P. to the mole. <laughs> um, but 
Yeah, it'll be interesting to see who they go for. Um, I think no Rangers, they feel like they've got to go get a big name rather than probably getting someone that is actually going to improve the football club and having the, you know, the actual strength, the boardroom having the strength to say this is who we're going to bring in because we feel we'll be a, a right fit for the club, like so we did with Postecoglou. No one knew who Postecoglou was apart from, you know, the one random Japanese fan that one random Celtic fan that's living in Japan. Like, no one, no one had a fucking clue. So, you know, the, the board was strong. It was a fantastic appointment. Um, you know, Brendan. We, we get Brendan back off of the, off of obviously the, the strength of work that Andrew's done. But if they get Lampard, then they get Lampard. Does Lampard worry me? No, not really. Why um, would he? His track record is abysmal. Um, but we'll we'll see. Hmm. Well, let's move on to Celtic because it was a very climatic finish to that game. Uh, it was a goalless, goalless first half, I believe. Celtic then broke the deadlock after the hour mark. And then after more than a few minutes added on at the end, uh, Motherwell managed to grab a late equaliser. It was late at the time, in the 95th minute. And then Matt O'Reilly there to spare some blushes there for, for you, Joel. But, um, mate, talk us through it. <laughs> yeah, look, I think I've said this a few times, and... Already this season, the you know, overall when we look at the performance of other games that have caused a lot of reaction, the likes of St Johnston, um, you know, I don't think the St Johnston performance was as bad as we as we made out, but we ended up drawing. I actually think we played worse against Motherwell. Now Motherwell are very good at home. Um, they're structurally and they organise very well. They work very hard. You know, Stuart Kepp was got were playing really really well, and they've played obviously us and, and the Rangers back to back and lot lost by an odd goal in both games which shows the the strength and the he's really turned them around and it's it's good to see Mother was a great community club. Um they do have that gaggle of dickheads that sit in the corner that think they're ultras fuck off. But um oh, the twist and shark club. I, <laughs> <laughs> fucking confetti brigade. Um but for you know, they frustrated us. You know, they they pushed us out wide. You know, they, they closed down the space inside. Kyogo didn't have a sniff all day, um, and we were definitely finding it hard. Um, first half, there wasn't wasn't really much in it. wasn't really any sort of openings or clear cut chances. I vaguely remember like Scales having a header from a corner where he's kind of leaning back. It goes a little bit wide, but wasn't wasn't really cutting them open. Like I said, they defended very very well. In the second half, the game starts to open up a little bit more. Um, Days and Maeda get slotted in by Greg Taylor, five yards out. And somehow he thinks he's playing at the Rugby World Cup and sticks it over the bar. Um, I'm getting more and more sick of this guy as, as time goes on. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, Brendan was bold with his, with his substitutions. It took off Kyogo, um, took off uh, Yang, put on Forrest, took off Maeda, put on Palmer. Um, I mean, James Forrest looks like he's won a competition to play for Celtic um, <laughs> and he's living out his dream. Um, and he's been a fantastic servant for the football club and he'll go down as you know, a very, very decorated player. 100 goals, 100 assists, like a fantastic achievement. But he's five yards out, free header, and he manages to hit the keeper. And that was at 0-0. Uh, it just looked like a frustrating day. It didn't look like anything was going to come off. We didn't really test the keeper. Scott Bain had a he had an all right game, an all right um game in goal, we had that shaky moment where um, the ball come in from the corner and they kind of headed it back in and the guy jumped up with him and he dropped it and they scored but it was offside so we didn't have to get into whether it was a foul or not luckily um, so and you know thankfully in Scotland VAR worked <laughs> wasn't working in North London but um, well, we'll get on to that later <laughs> as well <laughs> um, we, um, we were huffing and puffing and not really going anywhere and then Pop the ball out to Lewis Palmer. He kind of drops a shoulder, comes in edge of the box, whips a cross in. It's definitely a cross. Don't let him try and tell you it's anything other than that. But he whips a cross. 87th minute, whips a cross. Manages to evade everyone, evades Liam Kelly and, the, and goes in the bottom corner. Happy days. Look at this. We've we've got out of here. We've, had, we've snatched it at Fur Park. Let's shut up shop and run, run home with three points. And let's just put this result behind us. Or performance behind us, even. Um... But no, 
No, thank you. Um, obviously, the, then they're, they're piling on the pressure. Um, you can be super critical for the goal and say that Liam Scales kind of switches off a wee bit as the ball comes back out. Angus a wee bit harsh. Angie had an all right game. Angie's done very well since he's been thrown in Liam Scales. Um, he starts tonight, which does give me the fear a little bit that we're starting Liam Scales in the fucking Champions League. But you know, Angie, Angie's done all right for us. Um, probably his most shaky games were away at Ibrox and away at Feyenoord, so which tells you when we go up a level of opposition, he maybe struggles a wee bit more, but I mean, he somehow got man of the match at Ibrox, so, but anyway, um, the the boy Spittle, I think it is, um, it drops the shoulder, goes, but it may, it may not be Spittle, fuck knows, but drops the shoulder, buries it, I can't really remember who it was, because I was too busy fucking losing my voice, screaming that dog shit they were, um, <laughs> but buries it, Sends Fur Park into raptures. Like I said, that wee pocket of plastic ultras are running onto the pitch. Um, they ran onto the pitch. Yeah, they oh. thought it was. They thought it was all very over. plastic behaviour. <laughs> well, don't, don't say that, mate. <laughs> Calm down, because <laughs> we did the same. <laughs> but, yeah, but not not for a fucking draw, though. But um, I, I don't mind. I don't mind them. Um, it's a it's a bam up, you know what I mean? I don't I don't mind I don't mind it, fuck it. It's I think it's good crack. I'd probably be saying different if it was the other side of the city, but we move on. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, they're on the pitch, I think it's all over. Um then ninety seconds from kickoff. We do stay patient, we don't lump it in. Um you know, Nat Phillips runs runs up with the ball, gets to about twenty five yards out, pops it off to Greg Taylor. Greg Taylor puts in an absolutely splendid ball. Um Matt O'Reilly on his weaker foot jumps up makes it on the volley into the roof and it 2-1 sends the away fans into absolute raptures and then we do the old party trick and run on the pitch as well um that, that wee pocket of more understandable uh, though <laughs> that wee pocket of plastic ultras are, are really pissy um but yeah look it's one of these one of these things that, that they're the kind of things that seasons are made of i remember you know, when we did it to St. Johnston, something basically identical. You know, when Yakimaka scores late after we've conceded in, in yeah, Stockton. Yeah, I Ryan, remember that. Um, at Madama Park. And, you know, we've we've had to run up and, and snatch it. These kind of things just build it. You know, remember like Andrew, but the, the big one with Andrew's up Dundee United at home when we thought we were going to draw and we scored a go um, and give ourselves breathing room in, in the title as well. So I think that was, the, uh, I think that was when um, Abada scored late on, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. So, you know, these kind of things are built on the season. And then off the back of that, like I said, you know, I would imagine there would have been a really flat feeling on, on the other side of the city going to the game, knowing that, you know, the Aberdeen always come, you know, ready to play in that game and, and you know, have obviously come and, and got a massive result that leaves them seven points behind. It's that winning mentality, mate. And this is what wins you titles at the end of the day. Yeah, it's that, you know, you never know when you're beaten. You never know when... Yeah. You know, you've you've only got a draw left in you. You know, the belief was obviously there, and you know, Brendan Rodgers' first spell at Celtic, you know, was kind of infamous with late goals at Fair Park. Tom Rodgick scoring late on to win four three that day, and you know, Matt O'Reilly, another fantastic midfielder, has um, popped up. I think it's his fifth goal of the season now. Um, he, he's he's a really really probably the most important player I think for us at the moment. Yeah, um, he's been. Fantastic since Brendan's come in, so long may it continue. Um, but yeah, it's, it set us up really nicely, you know, give us a real feel good vibe going into to the weekend. Uh, sorry, going into to the obviously midweek off, off the back of the weekend, and then on top of that, obviously, Lazio got beat by AC Milan as well. So they've only won a couple of games this season. It's a big opportunity. Obviously, one of the games they won was Napoli, and they're pretty good. We see that last night. Um, as they push Real Madrid all the way, they're all right. So the fact that they've got that in their lock up, hopefully, you know, the the team that turns up soon, the team that's been struggling against mid table Serie A teams, and we can, you know, take the the scale off Napoli, and then you know, we can kickstart our, our European campaign. But it's a it's a massive night. Obviously, going back to back with Atletico in the next two, well, I think probably to have any ambition of playing European football post Christmas. We need to win tonight. Yeah, hundred percent. What's your mind telling you about tonight's game? Um, I'm hoping that Atati 
sharper tonight than he has been, you know, in the Feyenoord game and the the Motherwell game. I'm hoping that he's you know he's back sort of peaking, and him and O'Reilly and McGregor can dictate the midfield. Yeah. I worry I worry about the flanks and Days and Maeda and Yang. I worry like Maeda, we know he's going to run for days, and Yang. He's looked okay at points, but then really, and I think Kyogo, you know, he spoke about saying being the best since Larson. I think if he wants that that title, he wants to be spoken about in that way. He needs to have big European performances. You know, we, we see it from Musa Dembele, Yodson Edward, obviously Henrik Larson, but you know, players down the years, Gary Hooper, Georgia Samaras, these these fellas that stepped up on this occasion yeah. and had big big performances. So. I think you know he's he scored a few in the Europa League, but last year didn't manage to open the his Champions League can and, and really do himself justice. So I think he needs to to really have a you know a coming of age in in the Champions League, and I'm hoping that um, that'll be tonight. I think it's Celtic in Europe, so we will probably concede, so we need to score twice. But we're at home. Um, Brendan's first game back. You know, he's spoken a lot about um, European football. It's his first home game back for in, in terms of the Champions League. So, I think tonight's a big, a big statement. Can It'll we be go a out? Massive occasion tonight. Yeah, can we go out and get it? And obviously, it's going to be a real hostile atmosphere with with Lazio coming to town, and you know the the fascism and kind of culture that they'll bring. It'll be it'll be a spicy one. So hopefully, it'll be. I think in two one to the good guys. And, um, two one to the good guys. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, getting that experience last season in the Champions League against tougher op- opposition, in my opinion, I feel that Kyogo, like, as long as he doesn't look out of sorts or feels some form of isolation, as you you expressed that he did um, in some ways against Motherwell on the weekend, you feel if you... I think with that under his belt and he gets one, it could really open up his confidence to... But score more the, as the, the difference between the difference between the weekend and here. Lazio are not going to sit in. You know they, they obviously got their point against Atletico, but they are going to have highlighted probably us home and away and Feyenoord at home. You know as places where they really need to go and get points to progress. So you know they're they're not coming to you know shut up shop and take a point home. They're coming to to beat us. So they're going to come and they're going to play. Um, they're not as strong as they were. Obviously they've lost the likes of Malink, Malinkovic Savic. You know he's obviously away to Saudi, but they've still got some players that can hurt us. Yeah, they're a team in free for all. Um, you know managers under pressure, teams under pressure. Um, so it is a good time to play them, but also. You often find that the European nights and cup games, you know, gives you like a welcome distraction away from the league. So, you know, they're going to be playing with the freedom. They're already off the mark. They're in a decent position in the group. You'd expect Atletico to do the business against Feyenoord at home. Um, and I mean, we can get a live update on that right now. It was three two to Atletico at the moment. Um, so, well, Feyenoord not lying down by all means. Yeah, so they've gone and give a real good account of himself there. So, um, you know, with that result going that way, I'm sure Lazio will, will feel that this is a place that they need to come and, and get maximum points. The fact that, you know, they're not showing that they're, they're going to go toe-to-toe with everyone in the group. Um, I don't think Feyenoord played their best stuff on match day one, but I don't think we looked... I don't think we played our best stuff and we looked more than a match for him. So, mm. yeah, obviously last time we played him, we did the double over him in the group. So we've got that good kind of feel-good factor in terms of recent um, history. So, yeah, hopefully we can go and put on a good performance, get a good result and kickstart our, our campaign in the Champions League. Yeah. And, you know, and from a neutral perspective, it's always an exciting occasion to see Celtic, you know, in the Champions League under the lights and seeing Paradise packed out the way it is in your background picture as it is right now. Yeah, it'll be um, it'll be noisy, you know. We'll, we'll bring. I hope it's a hostile atmosphere. You know, I think we spoke before. Yeah, about... we spoke about it last week and yeah. about you know where you have well, not even fans, but spectators more like. Yeah. Who have a more neutral approach when going to yeah, these no. big games, and they're there to purely see big names play, and it's 
It's just they're not, they're not the right characters that you want in games yeah. like this. Like you said, you want them, everyone to be a bunch of cunts and really get under their skin, yeah, where the players I... don't, you know, where they come away and say like, "Oh Jesus Christ, that you know, wouldn't want to go back to Celtic Park." Yeah, make it hostile, make it uncomfortable, uncomfortable for them to play, and roll the boys on, and hopefully, we um we come out victorious. Yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, mate. But yes, um, I guess that takes us nicely across to you know down south and then slightly to the east. I the west. The west. Depends on <laughs> I, I was coming down from like well, I was going to you, to you're, Yeah, yeah, okay, was, yeah, no, okay, um, that's fair but, enough. <laughs> yeah, um, off into um, the land of the red mist and the dragon. It's been a mixed bag, obviously positive on the weekend um and for a few days at the dizzy heights of the playoffs and then you know vicarage road a stumbling middlesbrough um albeit i think they got a result against watford on on the weekend and started they to, did yeah started to kind of refine a wee bit of form that they, they had had last season um but ultimately you know on the wrong side of that result um i'm, I'm cautious at the moment because i think that we don't probably don't want to get too far ahead because of you know the journey that you're on, but yeah, obviously talk us through like I said, positive on the weekend and then you know kind of a snap back to reality to quote Eminem. Yeah, it, it, to be honest, coming in on work on Monday was like being on cloud nine. I was you know obviously we won the last we we won four in a row, you know prior to yesterday's result, uh, sitting top of all my fantasy league tables so. You know, I was in the best mood in the world. And, yeah, so starting with the Rotherham game, very stubborn side, but we were just fortunate. Especially when there's water on the pitch. Yeah, 100%. And luckily we have a better attack than they do. In fact, they're just utter shite, really. they've I think they've outlived their stay in the championship for far and, too long because they have no ranges. quality at all. And they got a swimming pool for a fucking football pitch unacceptable but no they 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 were very tough to break down though and that was the approach that i expected robin to take coming uh down to south wales and yeah we it took us a while to you know we created created chances throughout the first half and then the second half rosie receives the ball on the left flank digs in a beautiful ball with the back person atete beats his man up in the air and that's now five goals in a matter of games for Keon Atete, and it really starts to show that he's. When he first came to the club, I always described him as like the diamond in the rough, because he's a he's a big physical striker who's very good with his feet, has very good ball control, and very technically gifted. But by all means, he's still young, nowhere near the finished article. But I feel once he works on key areas, he could well be one of the best all-round strikers in the championship a bit far-fetched to say now by all means but he has been a shining light for us in in the last few weeks and and then going on to the the Middlesbrough game in all fairness I've got to give it to Borough they played well they played really well because we played well as well um we looked the better side for the first 30 minutes of the first half and Carlin Grant has a beautiful opportunity where he receives a lovely ball through Perry and G, goes through on goal, places his shot straight at Zach Stefan, and then from that point onwards, it just the momentum completely switched over to Borough, and we had to really sit back and you know maintain our shape and not allow them to dig out any gaps that were that they could find, and and then it felt like the second half that we. We came out a lot more cautious and a bit more wary where Borough had now got momentum and had got got their comfort playing the way they like to play. And Tanner hits the woodwork, I think, within the first 10, 15 minutes. And then, like I said, it was fine margins and it would have been, it would have been critical to call out any players but I feel NG does lose his man a bit too easily at the back post low ball comes across the left side and it's a simple tap in 
And then from that point on, the floodgates opened for us as we were looking to push for an equaliser. And then hypothetically onwards, if we got that equaliser, then going on for a going on for a winner. And it was just the case where we had everyone forward. They got us on the break. And it's a, again, it's another great finish. Well taken. They doubled their lead. And from that point on, it was just throwing bodies forward. And they easily could have gone and made it three or four in those last 10 minutes. But no, props to Borough because, I mean, despite them having a rough start to their championship campaign this season, as they did last season under Chris Wilder, this is a team that I remember me and you, Mayhem, backed to re- you know to go up from the championship last season with how well yep. Michael Carrick had done. And I know they lost Chuba Ak- Akpom in the summer. They lost Ryan Giles, who ended up going to Luton in the end from from Wolves, who they had him on loan from. But you know, despite their poor start, I feel Michael Carrick is still more than capable to drag them back up the table and back where. I would have expected them to be at the start of the season, and so I think I think they've just had a slow start. I think they've had to adapt quite a bit with losing those key players and whoever they brought in had to go through that transition period themselves and adapt to Michael Carrick's style of play. And but they did they did, they honestly they they played well last night. I thought we played well, and if there was really any questionable decisions about the game last night was probably why Errol Bullock decided to start Ebu Adams right back when predominantly he plays in midfield but he's he's put him in at right back but yet we still have Marlon Romeo on the bench who is more recognised to play in in that position but I don't know if there's more behind more behind the scenes I don't know if there's something that Romeo isn't doing that Errol Bullock likes, and he's purely there for squad rotation. Uh, we didn't start Jamie Lou Collins against Barrow last night, as he picked up a knock uh, on the weekend against Rotherham. So he was benched. Perry was moved out to the to the left, and then Ever Adams was slotted in at right back. And had a, he, he had a few struggles last last night. Uh, you know, gave up possession a bit too easily. In some areas, they they definitely look to target that area as well and so I think that was really the only one bit of criticism and again speaking in hypotheticals I feel if Carlin Grant takes his chances the game could have been a much better outcome for us but we can't win them all that's that's the that's the be all and end all of it it was always going to be difficult to go to the riverside as it always is and the best thing we can do is just put it behind us hope that we bounce back on the weekend we're we're back at home on the Saturday, and you know, it's, it's, we've got to get back to how business was as usual when we've won four on the trot. And I heavily, heavily believe we can do that because, like I said, we played well, but Middlesbrough just managed to, like I said, they they found those gaps in our defence, and we we were exploited. Yeah, I think I think for a football fan as well, as much as you know, it's unrealistic, but you, you obviously do want to win every game, um, especially when. You're in that rich train of form. You don't you, you don't want it to stop. But as, if there's a good performance to go with a loss, you know it's easier to take. Um, mm. And and it sounds like you certainly acquitted yourself at a place that I, I think, like you said, they've had a tough start. But I think a lot of teams will struggle to go there and, and, and get results. Oh, absolutely. But Tuba Ratpom was their guy. Mm-hmm. Like you know, twenty whatever twenty plus goals last season. Yeah. Um, you know, and extremely unlucky in the playoffs not to. Not to at least make Wembley and, and give himself a, um, you know, a, a one, a one game shootout to to get up because they were, I think, one of the best teams to watch in the championship last season. The way he plays that box midfield, the rotation, the way the wing backs were going on, and you know, to lose, to lose the likes of, you know, Giles and and Akpom is is huge. Yeah. But I feel they managed to, you know, they've retained the spine of that team in the you know, the likes of Dale Fry, who is arguably one of the best centre backs in the championship, in my opinion. That James McAtee, who I feel, I, th- I think they got him on loan from Man City, I believe. Oh, yeah, he was at, yeah. he was on loan last year with Sheffield United, wasn't he? That's it. That's the one. Real player, very good for the championship, especially. And so, yeah, they're. 
you know, despite their poor start, it was it, there were never going to be a pushover, and they've had an upturn in form prior to last night's game, where they went to Vicarage Road on the weekend, came away with a good good victory, three two over Watford, and I think they'd won midweek prior to that as well. So Watford they, must be getting ready to sack there, and that whoever's in charge there, like where are they near the relegation zone? So he's probably got about twenty minutes. I left think Watford him. are just outside of it at the moment. Yeah, he's getting sacked soon, isn't he? Well, Cardiff could be the nail in the coffin when it comes Saturday. So. Oh, is that who you've got? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very good. But um, again, but again, like like I said, I think I think as much as I was disappointed with losing, as I always am, I think it's just still being in that mind of disbelief that we are playing so well at the moment. Yeah, and look, it's been. You know, since Bullet's come in, it's, it's been a, a massive contrast from last season. So you have to take the positives. I don't think any Cardiff fan, if you'd have said, "Where are you going to be after ten games?" would have predicted just outside the playoffs. And you certainly would have been. I'd have been limbless. You wouldn't have been ripping one arm off. You'd have been ripping two. If I'd have said after ten games, you want to be sitting eighth, you'd have been taking that happy days with a, a healthy amount of points on the board and, and moving towards what should be the first primary target of, you know, securing that 40 point mark as quickly as possible and then seeing how many games are left and, and seeing where you can potentially push to. So I mean sitting eighth and a win over the Jacks, mate, I'd rip my genitals off and <laughs> like honestly, like <laughs> that's oh. like that's that's really like how much I would have gone <laughs> to the ends of the earth to see wasn't, where we are right now. Wasn't expecting that. Um but before we before we transition, any any other call outs for the championship? I see that I think Ipswich won again. They're doing well, weren't they? Ipswich, they're doing all right at the moment. And again, a really good result last night against Hull, another team who I personally have backed this season to be up in that top six. I think they've got a very very good squad this season. Strange with Hull, like because it was only you know you only talking about like six seven years ago. Was that, I don't know if it was that recent, but obviously within within the last decade, we'll, we'll play it safe and save in the last decade a Premier League team. Just one of the another one that's come down and fallen. Um, t- but you see how difficult it is. You know, Watford lead struggling this season. Like it's, it's it isn't as easy. Leicester are doing pretty well. Southampton probably aren't doing as well as they thought they would be. They're starting to pick up now. Southampton. They 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 got a big result last night. And I think they're starting to find their way back after losing big players like Ward Prowse and Lavia, and so they're they're starting to pick up a bit. Yeah, Leeds, Livermento. Livermento as well, good old Tino. I don't, I don't think he's even played, has he? It's just got, it's just been brought to have a season ticket at St James's Park. Guy's second field to Trippier, that's why. I don't, <laughs> that's really sure, all he was brought. Surely for. you can get in front of Dan fucking Dan Burn at left back. Surely. He could even, they that, could even play Trippier there. How is that guy playing at left back? <laughs> he looks so out of place. And he's about to come up against fucking Killian Mbappe tonight. Oh, oh that's going to be fun. I'll tell you what, yeah, Champions League is certainly going to be fun. Why don't we transition over to Champions League? As... <laughs> well, this is probably going to come hand in hand. So, Man United. That is a team that are, I mean, there's having lack of confidence, and then there's then there's Man United, completely deflating to watch. Yeah, utterly horrendous. Um, the only the only shining light in that team, Rasmus Hoyman. Um, yeah, yeah. Man, what what a player he looks. Right. They paid a lot of money for him. Fares. He still looks very raw. He's a lot to to learn, you know, positionally and you know, linking up play and, and all that other kind of stuff. But in terms of raw, like athleticism, he clearly knows where the goal is. Yeah, Angie's going to be Angie's going to be. He's going to be good. I think the one problem United might have is that he may have thought he was signing up to a bigger, you know, to get a better deal than this. You know, what are they tenth in the league? Play two Champions League games, lost both, you know, scrapping for maybe even Europa League at this point. You know, when you you know you're looking at okay, they lost to Bayern on match day one, that was expected, but Galatasaray at home, like 
you know, that, that's a bit dodgy. We see last night as well that Copenhagen aren't going to be mugs. They're not going to be pushed over. They're pushed by and all the way. Yeah. Two two huge games. You know, the, the home the home and away fixtures here against Copenhagen are massive as to what United can do in that group. But they just... They just they look so out of sorts. Like Onana, I, I I still think he'll come good. That he's having a real sticky spell. He does give the ball away in in poor positions. He, he did it at Inter. He did it at Ajax. He, that is something that he does. I think he's going through a horrible patch of form at the moment, exacerbated by the fact that United are playing poorly in front of him as well. So any mistake he makes is heightened because you know there's a not there's the odd goal in every game. You know if he's making those mistakes at three one two, that's a bit shit. But you move on. That's not happening. You know, he's making them at two all and that. Um, you know, obviously massively at fault for Casemiro's red card, gives the ball away. Yeah. But at fault for the third goal as well. He is struggling. I still think he'll, he'll come good. But, um, you know, Ten Hag's got some massive decisions. Does he allow him to play through this poor form and hope he comes out the under end? Does he drop him? You know, does he does he keep faith? I think Ericsson come on last night and looked decent. Um but ultimately, like Rashford just looks devoid of any confidence. I threw on goal, Marcus Rashford last season buries that, try, trying to square it. So yeah, exactly. He puts his foot through that across goal, and then I think at that point it's what two one to United at that point. Yeah, and then you know Hoyland then obviously picks the ball up, and you know in a in a world that doesn't exist in the land of what's and ifs, you know that's three one and probably the game dead. Instead, you know you, there's red cards and, and pens and. Now Mario Cardi fucking and laughing at them. But... Top shagger, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Lock up your wives. Absolute. Just a club in, in disarray. Um, yeah. And I, I worry for Tan Hag because he's gone out and he, he's got players that he wanted. Um, and one of the massive ones was Unana. And that hasn't gone well. Um so they're, they're going to have some some real big games, but you, you know Palace at the weekend as well. You know, they're, shambolic against Palace they were. They just they are they're massively struggling, and I don't I don't quite know how that how they fix it or who they bring in to fix it because it just seems that like for the last you know since Fergie, there just isn't there isn't a right man for that job. It doesn't matter if you bring in a winner like Mourinho or, or Van Gaal, or you're. You know, you're bringing in someone that wants to, has a philosophy like Tan Hag. It just doesn't seem that anyone can get a, a turn out of this football club. No, absolutely not. You, you you honestly could not think of any name right now in world football that could go into that club and get the best out of each, each and every single one of those players because they've come in as world-class players. Wherever they come from, Rafael Varane, who came from Real Madrid, I know he's playing alongside Sergio Ramos and he may have made him look good. But this is a Champions League winner, World Cup winner, comes to United, and the guy just looks completely out of sorts. Alongside Lissandro Martinez, I'm pretty sure that the era de Visa, you can get away with playing a centre back who's four foot six. Not in the Premier League though. Don't play him centre back. He's a left back, and they need a left back as well. Like they're, they're signing Bregulon because clearly they don't feel they have enough cover. The guy's just a left back. Play him left back. This is it. He's so much better suited for that. But um, I, I think he's been one of their better signings. I, I'm saying he's a left back. I think he's on okay at centre back, considering you know what was kind of made of it. But I just I think that his tenacity, you know, he's, he's good on the ball. He's quite athletic. I think he just suits the wing back role down to a tee. Um, he's just a better build of player. That's really what it is. And then you go into like the midfield where you, again Casemiro. I know he was hard done by last night with the red card from a poor ball from Onana. But again, you know, a huge profile when he first came. Bruno yeah. Fernandes doesn't look like the same player when he first came to the club. Marcus Rashford, who banged 20 goals at least last season. Looks like he's going to struggle to get 15 the way he's going at the moment. Jaden Sancho, who they spent big bucks on as well, gets nowhere near the side. And he's on an individual training regime because he's overweight. What is going on in this club? I don't know, man. I have no clue. But it, it, there is just problem that the stadium is falling around, stadium's falling apart around them. You know, the owner thing is always brought back. That that looks nowhere near being cleared up. And but I mean, even looking at their midfield, like 
Man United and they've got Amrabat, Mason Man. Like, fucking hell. Jesus Christ. It's a like, mess, mate. And it's just, it's completely filtered right. down to the squad now. <laughs> You'd be. Uh, Mason Man, Amrabat. That is like a Brighton. Like that's what you'd expect to see, but I know they're doing really well at the moment. But that—that's the kind of like level of player. And Man United are like, scraping these deals across the line. It's—it's it's poor, mate. They're—they're they're in such disarray that you know, Anthony's facing all kind of allegations and charges, and he's making it onto the fucking bench and coming on like. I was going to say, yeah, he got cleared for contention very quickly, didn't he? I know, fucking. Jesus Christ, man! It was it was tough. It was tough to watch. I was sitting next to a couple of United fans, and they were they weren't even that angry, mate. Which which says it would speak to volumes about the the position they're in. They just kind of took it. But I think, I think we do need to pause for a little bit here and talk about the Premier League, right? Because I I take a lot of heat um, from a lot of people in work. Um, okay. And, and I would take a lot of heat, I'm sure, if I interacted on social media about how shit the Scottish league is and that. Um, and <laughs> you've got. United, they got beat by Galatasaray. And then RC Lens beating Arsenal. Like, can we can we stop pretending that this all encompassing fucking money box the Premier League is levels above everything else? Fucking Lens. Was a shocking result, if I'm honest. And I could sit here and like and again, like slight slightly unrelated, but my Swedish tutor is half French, Marseille fan, and heavily praised Lons for them for how well they did in, in Liga and last season. But if you look at Lons's team, they don't squad, lose their best player to the Saudi league as well, like some midfielder that fucked off the Saudi. Fofana, Saudi-League. yeah, Fofana, yeah. So like, the, I don't know. It seems there was some there were some crazy results, and and there have been across. You know, both of the obviously, you know, Arsenal started really well against PSV um, last time, but obviously, United again were um, were beaten. Um, there were some questionable results in terms of Brighton against AK Athens and you know Villa losing in their Conference League game. A lot made of this league, and um, a lot of them not showing up. No, they're not, and even even there, like you just said there, with Villa and Brighton, again, how how heavily we praised Brighton last week, and then were just completely ripped to shreds this past Saturday against Villa, six goals to one. Yeah, I think look, I think with Brighton, that um, they they have these kind of games, the way that they play, and and the type of football they want to play and the transitions that if they get it wrong and it isn't clicking we see it happen against Everton last season um, I think they have these kind of games they have this result in them um, but on the flip side you know they have the ability to you know take points off of any team in the league I feel whether it be City or whether it be you know whether it be fucking Luton like, but that's that's just that they, they, they can be that good but on the flip side if their transitions aren't working and the way that they play the way that they overload yeah they they got it all wrong and yeah and they took a real real thump in. Uh, I'm sure there was a good good evening um, <laughs> um in the interview when um Emery got in because it was fair play you know Ollie Watkins finally finally coming he's decided that the season's finally started and got it I didn't make him captain on the weekend <laughs> absolutely got it good 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 performance from them though um, 100% I like Villa as well um you know you know, Villa Park, proper old fashioned stadium, great, great fan base, yep. uh, biggest biggest team in Birmingham. That'll trigger some people if they're <laughs> um, <listening>. um but <laughs> it's about I can't if this podcast ever blocked me, there'd be several places in the UK I couldn't go, Burnley being one. Um Move out here, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um they really, really good result. Yeah. Well, one man that I did make captain, and who I do make my fantasy football captain week in, week out, Erling Haaland. I wanted to talk about Man City a little bit because they're going through a bit of a rough patch at the moment. And, of course, I work with Kian, who is a Man City fan, and he expressed his concerns regarding Man City at the moment. And it really feels that now that the... 
the squad depth is really catching up to them. So they've lost De Bruyne until New Year. Mares went to to Saudi. Gundogan went to Barca, and it just and Laporte as well. Forgot forgetting to mention, and it feels like he's only fill, filled those voids. Cancelo, Cancelo's gone, but again, no replacement there. And there was only the only business done was Gvardiol, Kovacic, Doku, and I think they, I think they were the only three players they signed, if I'm correct. Yeah, um, I'm, I mean it's difficult when when you are the you know that team's fan and you're looking at like I don't think losing to Newcastle is is a horrendous result. You know Newcastle. No, no, no absolutely not. Result, the Wolves one's a bit more concerning. Which was amazing, the fact that I said Wolves again, Dan, and then they managed to beat. Oh, yeah, we yeah we both agreed. Yeah, Wolves would be the third team to make up. Spectacular, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. They, they started so slow last season, and then in clicked into overdrive in the champion in the champions months, and I think they've started well. A little bit of a blip here, but I think even if City were three points behind going into February. Um, it's like I think again, you know, United used to do it all the time. What I would say is there does seem to be that this weird jinx on four in a row. You know, United never done it. There seems to be this big kind of it's difficult to do. Um, so I, I don't know if that's playing on their minds. I doubt it. You know, such an elite squad, great mentality. Obviously, Pep will, will be keeping them in, in the right frame of mind. Have won so many trophies. He does normally like to. To win the League Cup, though, and I'm not to put that down as a marker, and um, they're obviously out of that. But yeah, look, I, I think they'll be, I think they'll be fine. I think they'll they'll get back to winning ways tonight in the Champions League, um, and then you know that'll springboard them onto the weekend. But Harland, Harland's a, a fantastic player. Any club would love to have him. What I do think about Harland is he needs if he's gonna like, if he's gonna bag himself a hat trick, the guy needs like five or six chances. He makes a ton of chances, but he isn't. He isn't super clinical. He is yeah. on some games. Obviously, we've seen that Leipzig game where he scores a ridiculous amount of whatever it was, like five or whatever. So he is, but he does normally need quite a few chances. Um, but you know, City give him such an array of chances in, in games, and yeah, it just didn't click at, at Wolves, and it was a poor performance. You know, backed up by the fact they were out of the cup. But I think they'll be fine again if they were, you know, three or four, three or four points behind going into those those you know March April. May months, you'd yeah. back them to reel off, you know, yeah. nine, ten wins in a row. It's always tough when you're calling a row, isn't it? <laughs> 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 to be fair, that wasn't even my you know, my excuse for last night. I'm jinxing it. It's because I actually made a score prediction to Maria because she always asked me, like, oh, what do you think the outcome will be tonight? I was like, don't know. If we play well, we might win. If we play shit, we won't. <laughs> like. <laughs> And she's like, no, but what do you think the score will be? I went, fuck it. All right, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, backfired. Never happen right. again, happening again. Never happening again. Um, that takes us beautifully on to um, VAR. It's just another day for you and me. Well, I done shit. It. <laughs> yeah, it was. Someone's getting sacked again. Fuck. Me, I mean, that's... what an utter shit show they've, that is. They've released the audio. Have you heard the audio? I haven't heard the... I've seen they've released the audio. I haven't listened to the audio. I mean, it's just... That's dog shit as well. What did it yeah. sound like? All right. If it's... All right. <laughs> head, head, heads, it's a goal. Tails, it's not. <laughs> like basically, they're going through. They're like, yeah, they draw the lines. It's offside. Check complete. And then he kicks off, and and they're like, but he, he said check complete. He obviously didn't check complete means that they've got it right. And then it's kicked off, and then the, like the assistant VAR was saying, but he's kicked off. Is that like, we need to stop the game? So like, but we can't. Like, oh fuck, we can't. We can't. We need to stop the game. We, we can't. What? Why can't you stop the game? I don't understand. Like you, you just use a fucked up, right? Break that rule. Stop the game. Well, it's, it's just it's, a, it's just a normal stoppage though. But so because like apparently once the ball once you play on, you, you can't come back for some. I don't know why, but just break that rule. And but say, they've done it before though. That's the thing. They've done it before. 
oh, I don't know. I, I thought, but basically in that moment, right? They just they just should have stopped the game. I said you need to award the goal. That's it. You need to. But again, this goes back into like actually n- knowing what the rules and guidelines are. Yeah, mate. It was. It was. I. I mean, I, I can't even put it into words. It was horrendously bad, and. I feel for, for Liverpool fans, honestly, I do. Um, but at the same time, all this shit about wanting the game replayed. That's just clop being just clop nowadays. F- fucking grow up. You know what I mean? Like, the game isn't being replayed. Shut the fuck up and, and just get on with it. You know, it 100% shouldn't, should not have been a goal. Um, but move on, mate. Like, yeah, if, you, if you're talking about wanting to replay a game, let's replay the Champions League final a few years ago when Salah got a fucking bullshit penalty. Are you, but you're talking about like Thierry Henry's handball where Republic of Ireland don't make the World Cup. Like, there's all these ridiculous... Don't knowledge. get me started on fucking Cesar Azpilicueta when Card from the Premier League and he scored a header when he was a fucking e- Equelle Manga's dick offside length. Like, so... No. You know, yeah, it's, Get on with it. it. It was horrific, it was poor, but yeah, stop with all this nonsense about fucking replaying the game, man. Load of bollocks. And what I don't understand either is that they've gone and appealed the Curtis Jones red card. Well, I think what they really should be... That's been rejected. Not surprised. What they should be appealing is perhaps the first yellow that Jota receives. Can't appeal it when it's yellow card. Oh, can you not appeal the yellow cards then? Ah, well then... So and and I think in that instance, it, again, I, I I don't think he makes contact. But I don't think the angle is actually clear. As, does his knee? So obviously he, he, he hits like um, the the fullback. He like clips his own leg, but that isn't a natural. That that doesn't just happen. So is there like a slight as his legs coming through? Does his mm. knee slightly yeah. clip? I, I don't know. Harsh yellow card. I don't think it was intentional. But then, no. at, the, at the same point, why, why are you jumping? You've, you've literally just been booked. Why are you jumping into that tackle? You're already down to 10 men. Like, stupid decision-making. Um, but, you know, they defended superbly well. And then, you know, Joel Matip just absolutely tanks from the top corner and Tottenham Solid do it again. <laughs> like, Tottenham do it again, man. Score late, Sheffield United. You know, again, you know, Ange Postacoglu's record over the last two years of games at home. I think he hasn't lost in like 60 games or something but any team he's been managing What's at home. A record. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's it's heating up. Um, you know, Tottenham are, are flying, um, which is, it's, you know, it's good to see them back to, you know, some kind of force. Um, and they, they looked a bit, I don't know, they, they did look a little bit... Um, Confused as what to do when Liverpool were were reduced to to ten men and then nine men, um, you know they found it hard, really, really hard to break them down, which is probably a worry for Ange and Tottenham fans. But um, overall, they, they get the job done. First, you know, their record against Liverpool was horrendous. Mate. I mean, they've only beaten like twice in twenty seven games. So mm. yeah, you know, get no, that not great. off their back and. Um, they, they roll on, you know, so fair play. No, nah, and just really brought the champagne football and uh, that Celtic mentality with him. Yeah, look, he was always, he was only ever going to play one way, you know. Yeah. That was exactly what he was going to do. And I think it fits into the mantra, you know, Spurs have always been that, that team that plays good football and you know, sometimes, well, basically all the time, they don't win fuck all, but they play. <laughs> They play nice football, um, and he certainly brought that back. And you know, optimism is high. Obviously, they've been dumped out of the League Cup early doors, so they won't be winning that. No. But I think again, if Tottenham were offered top four, they would 100% take it. You know, point behind City, they'd have took that at the start of the season as well. So it's looking bright for them. Um, I think there's still a few areas to for them to really go and address, and you know, potentially get. A few more players in the door and a few players out, but yeah, they've been. I think they've been the 
it's mad because obviously you know that recently they've been in the Champions League and doing very well, but they've always been you know a real surprise package. Absolutely, hundred percent. But you know, like you said, like you know, long may the good times continue for Tottenham and Postecoglou. It's certainly been a good start, like you said. I mean, out of out of the Carabao Cup early doors, but if they can find themselves amongst that top four and. A, I'm going to tell you what, even if they finish above Arsenal as well, because there's definitely a slip up in Arsenal in the men's weave, as we saw last night against Long. So, I think it'd be a tall ask. I think Arsenal, you know, are, are a very good team. They've picked up a few a few injuries, but you know, comfortably dispatched of Bournemouth um, on on the weekend. So, um, I, I think they'll they'll finish high. Um, but you know all the people that we said were going to come back to the fourth fray, the likes of Chelsea and and United and that they're not there. So the top four is is opening up for for someone. Um, and you know Spurs have put himself in prime position at this early stage of the season to to be someone that you know can go through that door. And you know, those, those nights are huge for any club. You know the Champions League's massive. That's where everyone wants to play. So you get those in, and you start to attract. You know the kind of footballers that you want to the club and you know Tottenham's a, an attractive proposition because of where it is as well you know the, the stadium's obviously great you know the the new stadium the fact that they're in London it is an attractive proposition than maybe what a, a new castle would be at this stage so if they were back in the Champions League so it's um it's still a long way to go but Certainly, one thing that you can absolutely count on, if it, if any of this is reaching any Tottenham fans, which I'm sure you already know now, but but Andy's going to keep playing this style of football. It, you know, he's n- nothing's going to change, um, and he'll go out and find some absolute gems, and um, which he's done. Obviously, you look at Madison, like that guy. I know that he was well known in the league, but to get him for forty million, mental. No, no. Why do I feel like he'll go back in for Matoma as well? Yeah. He, He's a big fan of him. Yeah, like, he's a real big fan of him. He wanted him at Celtic, but Brighton were a little bit too quick. So he's a he's a big big fan of the guy. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me at all if um, that was someone that was, you know, on that they're that they're looking at that they want to potentially test Brighton's resolve. But you know, you look at the the money that Brighton have been selling players for, um, you know, midfielders, hundred million, and you know the kind of price tag they're slapping on Ferguson it, it would need I would imagine <laughs> yeah them, that's ridiculous that it would need a, a big offer to, to prize him away just let Chelsea make the first bid <laughs> um, they're, they're another one I just can't understand the what's going on at their club I know I that know. they I know beat, we, yeah they, did, they beat Fulham on Monday night but again like there's just something that just isn't clicking with Chelsea and you'd like to think that the likes of Chelsea, United, would really benefit with the likes of Villa, Brighton, Arsenal, etc. Newcastle being in European football and for them to really be tested in terms of having that squad rotation to be capable of performing both in the league and the, and the Champions League or Europa League or Conference League, whatever. But it's it's just purely them individually as clubs where they just can't seem to get things rolling right now yeah and it is you know um, just players that you thought were you know going to light up and play very well like Mudrick and that and yeah just nada given given nothing again I know he scored on Monday but just just been so flat and Again, you know, you've had Graham Potter in. That's, I think, a lot of people. We've openly said, I think, good manager Pochettino's there now. Like, well, what does it take? Oh my God! You know, it's, you mentioned Graham Potter there. I really hope he doesn't end up in contention at Rangers at all. No, he's already. They they approached him before. Um, the rumours were that they approached him before they even sat Bill, and he, oh, he turned okay. it down. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, good lad. He, no, it won't, it won't be Potter. He turned <laughs> us down. So well, you could just stick to being a jack bastard then. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, Chelsea. Uh, just 
don't know. I don't, I don't even Just know leave where. it at that, like, I don't know. <laughs> Billy and Pound, like, can't get a fucking turn out of your football club. Yeah. Well, I think that says it all. I think what we're going to do, we're going to wrap things up here. We're going to go enjoy some Champions League football. I don't know if you're going to still go have an early night yourself, Mayhem, after a very productive last few days. But as always, I always appreciate your time coming on to the pod and always a, always a good show. Oh, I mean, my pleasure. Um, it will be an early night for me, but yeah, I'm watching the football as we speak. But you know, as soon okay. as it's done... Yeah. It'll be shower and bed. Hundred percent. Yeah, I'm gonna get my laptop. Well actually I can watch it on here, but it doesn't feel as comfortable in a computer chair, but <laughs> gonna get that all sorted. But no, cheers for tonight, mate. Thank you everyone for tuning in. If you are new to the Football Booth Podcast, you can check out all our episodes on all audio platforms, including the big ones of Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Audible. If you would like to see the live recordings, we are over on YouTube at the Football Booth. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment on your uh, with your thoughts. And until next week, ladies and gents, I bid you all good night and the star.